Hey folks. Hi folks. Hey, it's uh, Brian from the Renaissance Caveman, and um, over the weekend I made a whole bunch of wine bottle pendant lights, and in order to make those, you need to be able to cut a whole bunch of bottles. Now, I've tried it a whole bunch of different ways. The best way I found is using a very specialty tool called the Kinkachu Bottle Cutter. There it is. And, um, well, I have a special trick to using this thing that the company doesn't even have in their training video, so I strongly suggest you watch. See how I use the Kinkajou to cut bottles, and if that's something you like to do for yourself, I strongly suggest you got one. All right, we'll see you in a few. The first thing you'll need are some clean bottles. Make sure your bottles are clean inside and out. The inside can be cleaned with hot, soapy water and a bottle brush. The outside needs to be clean and free of labels and adhesive residue around the area that you want to cut. I made another video showing a fast way to clean your bottles, so jump over to that if you need to. If your bottles aren't clean, the debris can make the score line go off parallel and then the beginning and the ends of your score line won't meet. Debris can also conduct heat differently than the glass, which can cause problems when we use hot and cold water later to separate the two sides of the cut. You should use hand and eye protection while you're cutting bottles. There's always a chance the glass could break in an unexpected way, and you don't want your delicate skin and eyeballs in its path when it does. You're going to need the Kinkachu, the rubber bands that come with the Kinkachu, and some abrasives to file the cut glass to a smooth finish. I have the diamond files and wet dry sandpaper that come with the saber tooth bundle sold by Kinkachu's manufacturer, Bottle Cutting Ink. You'll need a pot that you can boil a gallon or so of water in. And you're going to need a coffee pot or some other container with a spout that can safely hold and pour boiling water. Optionally, you need some spacer blocks, which we'll talk about in some more detail in a couple of seconds. I use my Kinkachu just a little bit differently than the company suggests. I use spacer blocks, which are just scraps of wood of identical thickness on which I rest the Kinkachu at the height of my cut. Scraps of plywood or dimensional lumber work great, and you can stack multiple spacers to achieve the cutting height that you need. Just make sure the spacers are the same height on either side of the cut. By using spacer blocks and resting the Kinkachu on top of them, I'm guaranteed a perfectly straight cut in which the start of the cut and the end of the cut will meet every time, which eliminates the biggest cause of failed jagged cuts later. I like to start by resetting the Kinkachu. Make sure the Kinkachu is fully open by spinning the two nuts on the side posts to the very bottom of each post. Then disengage the cam clamps on the two posts by making sure that their tips are pointed away from the Kinkachu. Make sure that the cutter is disengaged by checking that the cam is pointed towards the cutter head and not away from it towards the Kinkachu's body. Put your spacer blocks in place to either side of the bottle. For my project, I need to cut the bottom off, so 3 quarter inch spacers work great. Your needs may vary, but I do strongly suggest using spacers in order to get a straight cut. Now slide the Kinkachu down over the bottle with the cutting side down so that the cutter is in line with the top of the spacers. Put the bottom of the Kinkachu tight against the bottle and then spin the nuts on the two posts until they're snug with the bottom of the tool. Make sure to tighten both nuts evenly. If one side is tighter than the other, it can result in a crooked score line which can end in a failed jagged break later. You should tighten the nuts until the bottle won't easily slide out of the Kinkachu, but it can still spin easily. Now engage the cam clamp so that they're facing in towards the bottle. At this point, the fit should be snug. You shouldn't be able to pull the bottle out, but it should still spin. If not, adjust the nuts till you have a good fit. Apply some pressure down against the tool and engage the cutter by rotating the cam in the opposite direction. And now you're ready to cut. Once again, I like to do things just a little bit differently than Bottle Cutting Ink's instructions. Instead of turning the Kinkachu around the bottle, I like to keep the tool stationary on my work surface and rotate the bottle within it. With the Kinkachu clamped tightly around the bottle and the cutter head engaged, apply downward pressure against the Kinkachu with one hand and turn the bottle with the other. Keep turning until you hear a snapping noise or a grinding noise when the bottle cutter gets back to the beginning of the cut. 
Rotating once is all you need. Scoring the bottle more than once can result in bad breaks later and can put unnecessary wear on the tool. You can see here that with the aid of my spacer blocks, I quickly made a perfect cut around the bottle. Take the rubber bands that came with the Kinkachu and tighten them on the bottle above and below the score line. I'm not using the second band in this video because I'm cutting too low on the bottle to fit it. These rubber bands will keep the water we'll be applying to the bottle focused on the cut. Transfer the boiling water to your coffee pot and then slowly drizzle it evenly over the score line as you rotate the bottle. After you heat the score line, immediately drizzle cold water over it as you rotate the bottle under the faucet. You might have to do this a couple of times, but eventually the glass will separate. For me it happened when I remembered to put my gloves on and turned around to get them. Remember, when it comes to safety, do as I say, not as I do. When I get back to the sink, I find that the glass is separated after a single round of alternating hot and cold water. If we start with a bottle free of debris and keep the Kinkajou perfectly straight while cutting by using spacers, we maximize the chance of quickly achieving a perfect score. So cutting bottles with the Kinkajou is pretty stinking easy, isn't it? Um, another time-saving tip for you, if you plan on cutting a bunch of bottles, batch out the work. Um, basically what I mean is clean all your bottles first, and when you're done cleaning the bottles, then take and score all the bottles with the Kinkachu using the method I just showed you. Then take all your bottles over to the sink or in the kitchen, whatever, and separate all the glass. That will save you a lot of time by not having to move around so much. Just do all your jobs that happen in one place all at once, and then move on. Um, anyway, um, you should really go ahead and subscribe because the whole reason I cut these bottles is to make a bunch of wine bottle pendant lights and my next video is going to be teaching you how to do that. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified when the new video comes out and maybe in the future we'll have some different uh, wine bottle or bottle related projects to, uh, to show you. Alright, I'll catch you later.